11. Dimitrios Pagord says, The lives of students and staff members at Santa Fe High School in Texas were forever changed on May 18, 2018, when a student named Dimitrios Pagord says brought a gun into the school and opened fire during his art class. A staff member pulled the fire alarm, triggering an evacuation. By the time Pagorces surrendered to police officers 25 minutes later, he had killed 10 people, including 8 students and 2 teachers. He also injured another 13. Among the victims who lost their lives was a young girl named Shayna Fisher. Her family revealed that just a few weeks before the shooting, Fisher had gotten tired of Pagorces constantly nagging her to go on dates. She told her loved ones that he'd asked her to go out with him for months. A week before the shooting, Fisher made it crystal clear that she had no interest and told him to stop bothering her. She also reportedly told him off right in front of his friends. Pagonses later told police that he shot all the victims on purpose while sparing other students in a bid to tell his story. Shortly after the shooting, investigators theorized that Fisher was his main target and that he opened fire on her classmates after killing her at point-blank range. Later on in the case, prosecutors claim that Pogorsis was also motivated by the fact that he was bullied. He now faces charges of capital murder and aggravated assault against a police officer. If convicted of the murder charge, he could face a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 40 years. His court proceedings have been delayed multiple times due to concerns surrounding his mental health and whether or not he's actually competent enough to stand trial. He spent over three years living at a mental hospital, while the parties involved in his case debate over how to take the next step. Most recently, the judge overseeing the case ordered Pogorsis to be evaluated by an outside expert and claimed that the hospital staff have failed to restore him to a competent level. 10. Lewis Haynes 18-year-old Lily Sullivan was found lifeless in Pembroke, England's Mill Pond one morning back in December 2021. Somebody had strangled her to death and thrown her body away in the water. Hours earlier, Sullivan spoke with her mum, Anna, over the phone. Anna heard a scream right before the line suddenly went dead. She tried calling back over 30 times, but failed to get a hold of her daughter. An investigation led police to 31-year-old Lewis Haynes as the primary suspect for the murder. Sullivan and Haynes met the night before her death at a nightclub. After leaving separately, they crossed paths again in an alleyway and started to talk. They exchanged a quick kiss, and according to prosecutors, Haynes wanted things to go a bit further, but Sullivan shot him down. Part of the attack was captured thanks to security cameras. The footage showed Sullivan's phone repeatedly lighting up as Haynes went after her. It was the young woman's mother trying to call her after hearing the terrifying scream. Only two people will ever know exactly what happened that day. Sadly, one of them is dead, and the other, Haynes, refused to tell the full story. He denied that Sullivan rejected him, even after he allegedly admitted to his mum and girlfriend that he strangled a girl and threw her into the pond. The court ruled that Haynes had, in fact, tried to force himself on the victim and that he killed her when she refused him to keep her quiet and to ensure that his romantic partner at the time wouldn't find out. A friend of his reportedly saw Haynes enter the alleyway to approach Sullivan and warned him against it, reminding him that he had a girlfriend and that the victim was only 18 years old. The judge overseeing the case stated that he was sure Sullivan was on her way home and that Haynes was drunk and probably lost his temper. The killer was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 23 years before chance of parole. 9. Claudia Resendez Flores In 2021, 28-year-old single mother of three Claudia Resendez Flores moved into an apartment with her friend, James Jones, and his girlfriend in Rolling Meadows, Illinois. The three were hanging out and drinking in their living room one night a few days later when Claudia asked Jones to kiss her. He was quick to say no and remind her that he was in a serious relationship. To get the point across, he kissed his girlfriend in front of her. Claudia allegedly became angry after this and demanded that Jones kiss her too, but he continued to refuse. According to prosecutors, Jones watched as Claudia slipped her hands between the couch cushions where he kept his gun. 
He was horrified as she grabbed the weapon, turned the safety off, and pointed it straight at him. He had no chance to defend himself or run before the woman pulled the trigger and shot him in the chest. Jones's girlfriend quickly called 911 afterwards, and responding officers found the gun at the scene. Resendez Flores admitted to the crime during questioning and was charged with first-degree murder. She's now being held without bail as the case proceeds in court. In the initial aftermath of the shooting, the defendant's attorney, Courtney Smallwood, denied the prosecutor's allegation that Claudia had moved in with her friends. Smallwood claimed that her client lived with family members. In a statement to Newsweek, she pointed out that she should be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Sadly, the incident not only took an innocent man away from his family, it left three children without their mother. 8. Joshua Johnson After getting a part-time job at a Walgreens store in Colorado Springs in 2021, a high school student named Riley Whitelaw started complaining about unwanted advances from a co-worker named Joshua Johnson, who was over 10 years older than her. The manager addressed the issue with Johnson, but he continued to make Riley feel uncomfortable despite the warnings. It went on for about a year before a manager agreed to put the two employees on different shift schedules and warned Riley that if she picked up extra hours, she might have no choice but to work with the man. A few weeks later, Riley was found dead in the store's break room, with 42 stab wounds to her body. State troopers caught up with Johnson the next day, over 100 miles outside Colorado Springs. When they asked him about some visible injuries on his face and hands, he allegedly said he got into a fight at work. At one point, he admitted that he'd had a crush on Riley in the past but said he no longer had any feelings for her. Johnson also reportedly said that he fell in the blood at the crime scene and went home to change his clothes afterwards. Based on surveillance footage, prosecutors claimed that nobody other than Johnson could have killed the teen. They also found the suspected murder weapon inside his locker. Johnson scheduled to face trial for first-degree murder in May 2023. 7. Javone Duncan During a party at an empty apartment in Queens, New York back in October 2022, a young man named Javone Duncan started showing interest in a woman named Raylan Cameron. But Cameron wasn't into him, according to Assistant District Attorney David Ingle. She made it clear to the 22-year-old with a very blunt rejection. Duncan allegedly responded by brandishing a handgun and fatally shooting Cameron in the chest. Cameron attended the party with her cousin. At some point, her cousin left the room. The young woman texted a relative asking for help, but by the time anyone came, she'd already been shot. First responders found her clinging to life in the apartment building's lobby, where someone had dragged and dumped her. Before she died, she simply said she'd been shot accidentally and refused to give up the name of the gunman. Cameron's mum, Cassandra Adams, told the New York Daily News that Duncan started hitting on her daughter weeks before the actual shooting. She refused to believe the death was accidental and believes Cameron did it on purpose. Adams said that when Cameron turned Duncan down during a previous meeting, he slapped her in the face. The grieving mother also stated that this type of thing happens a lot when women turn men down. She said that she wished New York State would reinstate the death penalty and that her daughter's killer belongs in the ground. Duncan reportedly denied carrying out the deadly shooting and instead pointed a finger at his friend, who he claims he saw shoot the victim, but authorities believe he is responsible. Duncan has at least two previous gun-related arrests under his belt and is currently being held without bail on a second-degree murder charge. 6. Yagonda Grace Bushbaum In October 2020, on what started out as a normal night in Pensacola, Florida, police responded to a call about a shooting and found a man on the verge of death outside his home with six gunshot wounds. He was rushed to the hospital and, luckily, survived the incident. Investigators were quick to narrow their sights on the man's neighbor, 70-year-old Yagonda Grace Bushbaum. Bushbaum claimed that the man tried to assault her three days before and that he was trying to break into her apartment when she fired at him. 
If this were true, it would be a good argument for self-defense under Florida's Stand Your Ground law, which provides generous parameters for what constitutes a justified shooting. But the victim gave a different version of events. At the time, he was staying with a friend because a tree had fallen on his apartment during Hurricane Sally. Three days before the shooting, he stopped by, and Bushbaum tried to kiss him. It wasn't the first time she'd made unwanted advances toward the man. In fact, it had happened several times since he moved in next door. As usual, he rejected her. When he returned to the building three days later to check on it, Bushbaum asked him to stop by her place. He agreed, and when he turned away momentarily, she pulled out her gun, fired, and started accusing him of breaking into her home. The victim told police that he didn't understand why Bushbaum shot him and that he believed she was seriously mentally ill. He explained that his neighbor had developed romantic feelings towards him despite his rejections and that she wanted a relationship. Bushbaum was found guilty of attempted second-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. She's required to serve at least 25 years before she becomes eligible for parole, at which point she'll be 97 years old. In other words, there's a strong chance she'll never see freedom again. 5. Michael Carpenter In 2022, 28-year-old Nicole Hammond enjoyed working at DeBow Textile Inc. in St. Cloud, Minnesota, until her co-worker, 36-year-old Michael Carpenter, began pursuing her romantically despite her lack of interest. Apparently unwilling to take no for an answer, Carpenter made unwelcome advances whenever the two crossed paths. After about a month of dealing with the constant harassment, Nicole sent Michael a text message making it crystal clear that she wasn't going to tolerate his behavior. She also told him to stop making things uncomfortable at work. Nicole went to work the next day, expecting it to be like any other workday, or perhaps even hoping for a less stressful shift after putting her foot down with Michael. Instead, she was fatally gunned down in the parking lot before clocking in. A witness reported hearing a gunshot before seeing Carpenter running to his car and driving away. He was arrested later that day and taken into custody for a second-degree murder charge. Carpenter reportedly claimed that he heard the gunshot and that he was so traumatized by seeing Nicole's injuries that he ran away from the scene. But he had a harder time explaining why he didn't call 911 or seek help for the gravely injured young woman like most bystanders would have in that situation. Other employees told police that Carpenter had an extremely short temper and that he was upset about Nicole standing up to him during their conversation the night before. But management was unfortunately unaware of the ongoing issue. Speaking with Fox 9, the company's CEO Rob Debro said that management intervenes whenever it's necessary, but they had no knowledge of the situation or any indication that something was going wrong. Nicole's murder came as a shock to Dubro, who described her as a great, dedicated employee who was liked by everyone she met. Carpenter now faces up to 40 years in prison if convicted of the murder charge. 4. Rejected and Furious it's not often that the news reports on women committing crimes against men who reject them, but it still certainly happens even if it's not in the limelight. In 2021, a 35-year-old man from the Indian city of Pimpri Chinchwan named Pagamba Gula Mujwa was killed after refusing to marry his 29-year-old lover. The victim and suspect reportedly started out as colleagues. They quickly became good friends, and their bond eventually turned into something more serious, even though they were both married to other people. At some point during the affair, the woman began asking Pai Gamba to divorce his wife and marry her instead. He refused, but she wasn't about to let it go, so the topic led to several fights between the two. One day, about a year into the affair, the woman asked Pai Gamba to meet her at a local hotel, presumably for a discreet romantic encounter. He found nothing suspicious about the request and went out to meet her. During their time, behind closed doors though, the couple got into yet another argument, most likely about Pai Gamba's refusal to get married, and she allegedly strangled him to death with her headscarf in a fit of rage. After seeing the woman leave the scene, employees went to check on Pai Gamba and found him unresponsive in the hotel room. He was immediately rushed to the hospital, but doctors were not able to save him. 
The woman was arrested for the murder, and updates on the case have been few and far between ever since the story broke. It's probably safe to assume that she's being held in custody, while awaiting her fate at the hands of India's agonizingly slow justice system. 3. Darius Miles In early 2023, a 23-year-old single mum named Jamea Janai Harris and her boyfriend traveled from Birmingham to Tuscaloosa to visit her cousin at the University of Alabama. The three were out getting food when, according to Harris's mother, Dakala Cotton, a car with two men pulled up beside them. One of the men tried hitting on Harris, but she rejected his advances. Cotton later told CNN that the man refused to leave even after Harris made it clear that she wasn't interested. When the trio tried to get away, one of the men walked up to Harris's car and shot her. Police responded to the scene near the university's campus and found Harris dead in her car. Her boyfriend had returned fire and struck one of the men, who had to get treated at a local hospital and was connected to the crime through his injury. 21-year-old former University of Alabama basketball player Darius Miles was identified as the man who made unwanted advances toward the victim. His friend, 20-year-old Michael Lynn Davis, is accused of firing the fatal gunshot at the young woman. Miles allegedly provided Davis with the gun. Both men are facing a capital murder charge, and Miles was let go from the university as both a student and an athlete. The exact details of what happened are likely to be revealed as the case is carried out in court. 2. Jeton Wheeler Two weeks after a 58-year-old man who's known only as E.S. went missing in Shorewood, Minnesota back in 2013, authorities carried out a search warrant at the home of his girlfriend, 29-year-old Jeton Wheeler. They found the man's body in a freezer out in the garage along with blood spatter. The victim's remains were wrapped in plastic and duct tape. Leading up to his disappearance, E.S. reportedly told loved ones that he planned on leaving Wheeler since she had assaulted him and had been acting crazy. Wheeler allegedly told her boyfriend's relatives that he'd gone to Chicago, which he said he was going to do, but when nobody could reach him, they suspected foul play. An autopsy revealed blunt force trauma injuries and lacerations to the victim's head and face, as well as bruising on his upper arms, internal bleeding in his neck, and defensive wounds on the back of his hands. Authorities theorized that Wheeler beat ES to death in an uncontrolled rage after he rejected her attempts to get him to stay with her. They charged her with second-degree murder, but the judge overseeing the case urged both the prosecution and defense to come to an agreement to avoid a trial, which might have required Wheeler's young children to testify against their own mother. By then, Wheeler had offered to plead guilty to manslaughter, but the prosecution turned her down. After extensive back and forth, Wheeler agreed to plead guilty to aiding and abetting second-degree unintentional murder. She was sentenced to 14 years and three months in prison. Wheeler later appealed the case in hopes of obtaining post-conviction relief, but the court denied her again. 1. Armando Caballero While pursuing a degree at Valencia College in Orlando, Florida, 19-year-old Mia Marcano supported herself from her job at her apartment building's leasing office. When she failed to get on a flight to visit her family in late 2021, her loved ones immediately became worried and reported her missing. Police entered the young woman's home at the Arden Villa complex and found it in a state of disarray and noticed blood on Mia's pillow. Shortly before Mia disappeared, a 27-year-old maintenance worker named Armando Caballero was seen letting himself into her apartment unit. He had reportedly made unwelcome advances on Mia multiple occasions in the past, and she'd turned him down each and every time. Caballero was then named an official suspect in the case, but he never saw justice. By the time that law enforcement caught up with him a few days after Mia's disappearance, he'd already taken his own life. Mia's body was found in a wooded area behind the Timber Scan apartment complex several miles from her building. Her hands and feet were tied up, her mouth was covered with duct tape, and she was partially unclothed. The young woman's purse was found nearby with her shirt stuffed inside. Described by some media outlets as Orlando's most troubled condominium complex, Timberscan is mostly abandoned and is a hotspot for drugs, violence, shootings, fires, and other crimes. 
After Mia's remains were found, it also got the reputation as a body dumping site. Cell phone records and other evidence proved almost conclusively that Caballero was Mia's killer, and the police have not named or sought out any other suspects or persons of interest in the heartbreaking case since. Thanks for watching. If you worked with someone who was interested in you and refused to take no for an answer, would you continue fighting to get the issue dealt with properly or would you look for another job? Let me know in the comments below.